All right, here we go on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is it called when, um, what is it called when you have a mental representation that stands for objects or events that have a picture-like quality? Good. What are they, Corinne? Mental images. On your whiteboard, what is an idea that represents a class or category of objects, events, or activities? I asked you this when I asked holidays. And then you all came up with your favorite holiday and why? And they were all correct because they all fell under what, Lindsay? Concepts. What is it called when a concept has very strict rules? Like, for instance, in order for something to be a bourbon, and hat can only be made in three states and in 15 counties. It has to be made of a certain corn slash wheat ratio. And it has to be aged for at least a minimum of two years. Jaden, you don't have to put it in a pile. I'll organize my love. Thank you. Just put it in a pile, my darling. What is it, Corinne? Formal concept. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when one year for Thanksgiving, my in-laws asked me to make carrot cake? Which I will tell you, do not make carrot cake from scratch. It is a pain. It took me three attempts to figure out how to make the perfect carrot cake with the correct buttercream to carrot ratio. It took me three tries. Do you know how much? It took me three tries to figure it out. The perfect ratio between homemade carrot cake. You started, yeah, you started yeah, but I'm stressing the three attempts. Curtis. Trial and error. How many times did I say three attempts? Hey, well, you feel like I had to get the perfect amount You were like, what is it called when they asked me? I didn't say anything about butter and sugar. You've yes. just projected that. Yes. Yes. Buttercream. Okay. okay. Buttercream. Like Cindy, nothing I say to you today is going to earn me back into your grace, Sydney. She was so dejected from the lack of a bonus. I'm okay with the disappointing majority of you. I'm perfectly content. Here we go, on your whiteboard. If I follow a recipe perfectly and make no changes, it's a what? Emerson. Algorithm. On your whiteboard, what is it called when you use your previous experiences to solve a new problem? Like, for instance, in class, you had to come up with a perfect day for the person you trade boards with, looking at the things they like and come up with something new and interesting. Look what's happening here. Oh, the board's on the other side, got it. What is it, Maggie? Here's it. On your whiteboard, what is it called when all of a sudden I know the answer? It comes out, out of me, out of nowhere, but I got it. What is it, uh, Emily? Insight. Insight. What is it called when I can't come up with a solution? Like I ran out of eggs and I'm like, oh man, I can't make it, I can't bake a cake without eggs. But in fact, you can because I have four bananas and you only need two bananas to replace an egg. What is it called when I can solve other things? Or applesauce is another good one. Most of your vegan recipes are made with applesauce, fun fact. What is it? Luke. Functional fixiness. You are suffering from functional fixiness if you cannot come up with a solution. You do not suffer from. Oh. I'm going to eat those in my room. Notice that I know it's immediately. <laughs> it's who I am as a person. Uh, what? Is that the same thing as a mental set or no? No. Functional fixiness is you can't come up with a solution because you can't come up with something different. Mental set is that like you only think of one thing. Okay. Because you've only been exposed to one thing. Charles. What's, what's like a formal concept? A formal concept is what I use for champagne and bourbon. There are very specific rules for something that qualifies as champagne or bourbon. So is it like the same as an algorithm? No. An algorithm is a formula. If you do this and you do this, then you get that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's literally uh, a formula. 
a recipe or a formula or math equation, that would be an algorithm. And a concept is just like a concept a is just a big idea. Concept is like a big idea. Like technically, an International Pancake Day is a holiday, right? Okay, but a formal concept would be a religious holiday, and then you would list like I don't Kwanzaa doesn't Kwanzaa is not religious. It's cultural. It's cultural. It's not religious. Huh? Easter, Christmas, why am I, Diwali, which is going raging now, and things are getting wild in India. My husband has a client in India, and they continue to try to work during Diwali, and you just hear the craziest shit going on in the background, and these people are answering the phone like drunk, That's trying to like continue, because they like, drink throughout the day, because like, it's a big celebration. Uh, anyway. It's been entertaining for McCray. He's just like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> what is it called when you have a tendency for people to persist in using the same problem-solving patterns that have worked for them in the past? Like, for instance, my mother, when she needed to look pretty, put on blue mascara in 2016. It was not a cute look. I'm like, what was it? Mental set. Mental set. What is it called? When you only hear things that you like. Camden, you're eating them too. You got a mountain out of your mouth. So rude. You know how much, are they the toasted ones? Or the cheese ones? No. Okay, I hate you less, but not by much. What is it, Caroline? Confirmation. Confirmation bias. All right, what is it called when there is only one way to be creative? To come up with a solution. You have to be creative, but there's only one way. Like, for instance, the ladies in Hidden Figures, where they found a math solution using ancient math in order to solve the new problem of getting a man into the atmosphere. What is it called when there's only one solution, but there's many ways you can get there? What is it, Hayden? What is it called when I asked you what your favorite cookie is? And technically, all of you were right, as long as it was a cookie, even though I personally have disagreed with most of you. What do you got, Alexis? <coughs> Divergent thinking. What's your favorite? So I'm a white macadamia nut. They are so good. Huh? Stop throwing Corinne. <laughs> You really don't like them? I just don't oh. like white chocolate. I love I white chocolate. I like cream. chocolate chip is just so good that it's not toxic. If you like chocolate chip, you got to try the Fresh Market no. the giant cookies. Oh, I have, like, have you had the Fresh Market brownie filled cookies? See, I don't like the brownie filled. I like my desserts to be secular. If it's a brownie, it's a brownie. If it's a cookie, it's a cookie. No. You cannot mix them. You cannot mix them. I don't think. I have never had one, and I don't. I do not mix my desserts. If I'm having a piece of cake, I'm having cake. If I'm having pie, I'm having pie. If I don't really like cookie cake. It's a cookie because they don't really add anything to the frosting to it. Oh, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. We got the we got we got one free one, so naturally McCray had to buy two others. Oh, of course. because why would we walk in and not spend money, right? So we got three, and it was nice. We split them up so everyone could have a couple pieces of them. It was nice. It was a, it was a hit. No, I didn't because I wanted went in there getting lemon, and McCray's like lemon is trash. <laughs> No, McCray picked pumpkin. No, it was my coupon, and I got no selection. Huh? No, McCray wanted pumpkin spice because you know how basic he is. And then he bought like pecan something. Wait, you didn't even really have the third one then. Marshall McCray Bennett is the one who did the selection. I did not. On your whiteboard, what is the name of the first dude to come up with an intelligence theory? It is very negative, but it's the first one. Good, Luke. Spearman. Ninety percent of the population, according to Spearman, have what type of intelligence? Good. Uh, Ian. G. G, which is general. General. Thank you, Ian. Ten percent are special. What does special mean? You can raise your hand and tell me what special means. 
when we say special uh, special intelligence, what does that mean? Our S factor. What do we got, Kaylee? Like you're the best at something. Kind or of. Like you're like professional at. Kind of. What, what does it mean, uh, Emily? Can you exceed in like a specific area? Like you're talented in multi multiple ways. Okay, and you're at the top of your, like, yesterday I asked you to come up with someone who's talented in multiple ways that we could all relate to. I think Schwarzenegger did that one come up. <laughs> I saw him on the Today Show, and I was like, Maggie's going to be so happy. I was at the gym this morning, and I saw him, and I was like, oh, Maggie. I'm talking about Schwarzenegger, which just made me giggle. <laughs> okay, uh, we talked about, like, Ben Franklin. We talked about all these people, like Da Vinci, are your quintessential historical examples. All right. Who's the dude who came up with multiple intelligences? He has nine, but today he has 16 of them. You only need to know nine. It's a nice marker you got there, can it? Uh, can it? What is it? Emerson. Gardner. On your whiteboard, please tell me what's the guy who came up with three intelligences? Good. Curtis? Sternberg. Sternberg. Now, according to Sternberg, if I am very good at interacting with people and getting information, what type of intelligence am I? No. No. According to Sternberg, what am I, Lindsay? There you go. According to Sternberg, if I am book smart, what type of intelligence am I? Do you see the difference in it? Yeah, that's the one I meant. Like practice. <laughs> cool. Do you see the difference though? Yes. Yeah, okay, what is what is it, Sydney? Analytical. Analytical. And if I am an artist and I am very out of the box, what type of intelligence according to Sternberg am I? Uh, what is it, Nina? Creative. Alright, here we go. Okay, there is also another type of intelligence that, uh, intelligence is called emotional intelligence. It's not on your study guide. It could be on your though. No? Okay. Now, emotional intelligence is one of the things that, as a society, we're declining on. Okay? How to deal. Huh? Yeah. No, emotional intelligence is the awareness and the ability to manage one's own emotions as well as the ability to be self-motivated and to feel what others feel and feel socially skilled. Ladies and gentlemen, would you agree on that? Would you say society as a whole can empathize and feel for other people? Yes. No. <laughs> You're wrong. That's <laughs> true. Okay. Emotional intelligence is one of the things that um, people, society as a whole has decided that we are incredibly weak on. Hopefully your own emotional intelligence is okay. You're, like, you can't really help it. You're not going to be very good at it because like where you are developmentally. You're going to have a lot more hormones and a lot more emotions than like old ladies do. Um, but as you get older, you should be able to control your emotions more as you go. You can self-awareness and like, oh, I know what this rage feels like. I probably should have punched people. <laughs> Did not give an IQ score. 
However, it did start ranking children. So Binet's mental ability test is for children. It is the first intelligence test of its kind. It did not use the IQ. However, Stanford Binet IQ test is the second major IQ test, intelligence test, that uses Binet's intelligence quotient. Okay, so Stanford Binet intelligence quotient, okay, it uses Binet's intelligence quotient number and test children's intelligences. Test children's intelligence and then allows it to be ranked by quartile. So, anyone here ever take an IQ test? I'm not going to ask you which one. Does anyone take an IQ test? You played with blocks and someone timed you? Wrote down what you did? Yeah. You sat in a room with an adult by yourself? And they played different games, and you had to move, like, make little pictures out of things. They asked you to show you a picture or something, and they're like, can you build this? And then you build this with, like, blocks and whatever they pull out. Okay? If you did, you did the Stanford Binet test. You did the intelligence test. Um, some, high, uh, some high schools, no. Some elementary and preschools require it because they only want the best and the brightest. I'm to find out if you're paying up to the best and the brightest. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's all based on IQ and it's about scoring children's intelligences. Uh, it is somewhat reliable. It is somewhat reliable on birth intelligence. Somewhat reliable on birth intelligence. However, it does not foster in work ethic. So, you may not have been born to a very intelligent family. However, if you were instilled with a passion to read, write, and think, guess what? Can you surpass your IQ score? Yes. yes. So, you just have to have the work done. I think everyone understands you are built, born with a certain starting point of intelligence, correct? You come from two doctors. You're starting off on a pretty good level, okay? But that being said, if your parents are not doctors, does that mean you're an immediate idiot? No, because circumstance has a huge impact on who the doctors Weschler, which is right below it, ladies and gentlemen. Weschler intelligence test is for adults. The Weschler intelligence test is for adults. I have a head. That gives you a score. It gives you a performance score and an overall, overall ranking of percentile. Like your SAT, you get an SAT score and then you get a percentile. Have you noticed? The higher your percentile, the smarter you are. So if you're in the 99th percentile, you beat 98% of the people who took the score. If you're in the 40th percentile, you only beat 39 and 60% of the population beat you. So that's what percentiles are. They're telling you how, many, how much percentage of the people beat you. So it is an intelligence test, but it is for adults. It's not very common. You don't have to write that, but most people will take it. If they're going to take an intelligence test, it's simply with Stanford Binet. Stanford Binet, as we found out, is pretty reliable, but it's not completely indicative. So, your work ethic can compensate for your IQ score, so whatever it is. And as long as you work hard and your parents work hard, especially when you're a kid, when you're your parents have to work hard, then um, you can overcome a lot. So, okay. I do want you to be aware of a couple of things, especially as we go through. I need you to know that all IQ tests are culturally biased. And all tests are culturally biased, ladies and gentlemen. There was a question on the FSA five years ago that talked about snow. And because there was so much snow happening, what couldn't happen? 
school. School couldn't happen because they had a snow day or a test. Fine, whatever. Okay? But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Florida kid, born and raised, and you don't know anything about snow, would you know that answer? No. Probably not. Probably not. But if you ask a kid in Massachusetts, would they know that answer? No. Hell yes. When you know it starts getting cold up, you wake up and like, you wait. When I was up there, and this is the ancient times, you used to scroll across the bottom of the TV. You know how like you get your CNN updates on the bottom of the TV or whatever? You used to get the updates of what schools are closed. Now they just post them on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And some county in, in uh, Connecticut sings about it. They have a snow day song. Mm -hmm. Is there money? Yeah. Um, the superintendent of schools. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, cultural bias is on your city guide, by the way, which is at the bottom. So cultural bias is the person who makes the test typically is going to make it to reflect them. Because if you spend time making, if you make a picture, like an art picture, is it going to look like you? Is it going to look like things you see? Is it going to be surrounded by your cultural identity? Yeah. Same thing with the test. It's important. Have you noticed that I try to be super inclusive with my names? Read your test tomorrow and look at the names of the people in your examples. They're diverse as hell. <coughs> Which, you know, it's not someone who actually loves me. All right, here we go. Let's do reliability. Reliability is when a person takes a test over again, they get the same score. Okay, reliability. Kevin, is, is that an experience that you've had? What time? Yeah, SAT is a reliable test, ladies and gentlemen, which means if you take it, you are going to get around the same score. It is very hard to really drastically improve your SAT score. Unless it's a mess up for... Okay, then you hashtag blessed. No, like that. Oh, you're blaming a curve on your yeah, answer. The obvious one was bad. The obvious one was so legit crap. Sorry. Okay, yeah. so you reliability did. You could only means... Like two questions in the last section, and you were down like 300 points. It was like ridiculous. I was so mad. We're moving forward. Sorry. <laughs> Reliability means you can take the same test over and over again, and you will <coughs> likely get the same score. The SAT is a reliable test, and that's what I would do for your example. Okay? You probably know more than probably 60 points you're improving it. 60. 60. 60 to 100 is like the cap. 100? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You can't improve that much. Because some of it is straight up intelligence test. But then, like, if you don't, so, like, with a PSAT, like, I didn't study the Yeah, PSAT, you're not, we're, not, we're not talking PSAT. Okay. We're talking SAT, which is super regulated, super calculated. Not that it's a perfect test, because it's not a perfect test. There's no such thing as a perfect test. There's tons of issues. Especially if you are not a white person, that SAT sucks. Uh, but there's a lot of problems with it. So, reliability. Can I just see the next one? Validity means the test tests what it's supposed to test. The test actually tests what it's supposed to test. 
So, if I told you tomorrow you have a cognition test, but then tomorrow on your test it's all about whales. <coughs> Is that a valid test on your cognition? No. As validity is when a test tests what it's supposed to. So, if I'm going to test you on cookie recipes tomorrow, and there is a cake recipe on there, is that a valid test? No. No. I mean, delicious test. The one I'd like to be a part of. But no. Okay? So, validity is when a test actually tests what it's supposed to. So, have you ever taken a non-valid test? <laughs> Why? I thought he just asked really specific stuff. He but just doesn't teach the stuff. Yeah, but he doesn't have to teach it if it's in the book. Wait, who? Yeah, you do the same. You're gonna get a five. Like if you actually did the textbook. So if you don't, you'll be fine. Okay. So have you ever taken a test and you're like, what the hell is this crap? And you've never seen this stuff in the history of your life, and that is not a valid test for you did everything you're supposed to do. That includes the reading. Hopefully you've never felt like that about my test. If you were on the exam last year, we looked at pictures of Portuguese boxes. What'd you get on that exam, my love? I'm just saying that that was so random. It was random, absolutely. And literally anything else. Standardization, ladies and gentlemen. Standardization is when standardization is when scores, directions, and timing, scores, directions, and timing are done universally to ensure uh, limited exposure. Okay. This allows for direct comparison. Standardization allows for direct comparison. So if you all took the August SAT, which Camden hates, who else took the August SAT? Okay. So whatever you think about the August uh, SAT, I'm not trying to get into it. Moving forward, whatever your score is on that, say, I don't even know what the scores are out of now because, like, I don't care. But, like, I, whatever her score is, you can look at her score and say, oh, well, Maggie definitely is way smarter than Camden. Look how much her score is higher, okay? And you can say, oh, my God, Alexis is smarter than all three of them. Look at how much bigger her number is. Standardization, when you make sure everything is the same, it allows you to do comparisons. Any test that you take for the state, for the federal government, for colleges, like people, other people take are all standardized so we can compare you. The reason why you take the SAT is so we can rank you. They are, because it's a failed test. I mean, it's not a great test. But the reason why you take the SAT is so we can rank you. Because, theoretically, the higher you do on the SAT means the better you'll do in college. The better you do in college, the only reason colleges care is because if you're doing well in college, you're not going to drop out. So if you continue to stay in college, how many years are you going to pay for? Four, sometimes six, sometimes ten. Okay? If they take a gamble on a kid with a low SAT score who probably isn't going to do well in college, how many years are they going to be at school? Maybe a semester. Maybe a semester. Last year at Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame up in uh, Indiana, okay, they had the largest dropout. They forced more kids out of Notre Dame. Of Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Damn it. Notre Dame. It's like Notre, Notre, Notre Dame. Whatever. <laughs> they forced more freshmen out first semester than they've ever done in their like 200 years of existence. Because they all failed. Because they got went too hard during football season. <laughs> Which was a big problem. Yeah. So, people who applied for spring semester. There were more kids taken in spring semester last year at Notre Dame. Oh, <laughs> than ever before. So, 
those are the types of things you have to think of. Like every school, you're going to have kids drop out after the first semester because they can't handle football season. Florida is notorious for it. If you don't get into Florida for fall or summer, I would wait and apply for spring. <laughs> Surprisingly, there's going to be a lot of open uh, seats in classes because so many kids fail out of Florida right away. So keep that in mind. All right. Norms. Norms are predicted behaviors. Norms are predicted behaviors by data collection over the years. Thank you. Data collection over the years. So a norm would be as a white girl with a mother who has three degrees. She has one bachelor's and two masters. My father barely graduated high school. I don't think it's better. So that being said, because of my mom's three degrees, two, uh, one bachelor's, two masters. By the way, I have two bachelors and one master's, so fun fact. With that being said, the expectation for me and my SAT was to be significantly higher. Does that make sense? I'm from a white upper class neighborhood, the norms of my expectations were higher than say a Hispanic kid from the middle, uh, from inner city who both parents had did not graduate high school. Norms are the predictability to see how you are meeting, failing, or exceeding expectations. Okay? It's not a stereotype because it's reinforced, however, it doesn't guarantee anything. Does that make sense? Like, for instance, norms are also on scores. As a white girl from an upper, new, upper middle class uh, background, I was always expected to be in the upper quartile, not the top quartile, but the upper quartile of test scores. So as long as I was there, I was hitting, hitting my norms. Does that make sense? Okay, well, depending on your ethnicity, your background, all that. Oh, we're done? That's here. Three minutes. Can you get both Okay, everyone literally just packed it. Did you see it? Did you see how weird? Hello, weird. Yes, hello, weird. What? So, boss, can you focus attention to the body? Focus attention is when you are paying attention, uh, when you are looking, studying, and processing one thing at a time. Every single person in this room can do focused attention. They have one thing they're really passionate about. What's your thing, Emerson? Yours is your yours is your drawing. Oh, I just sure. can't. Oh, for sure. That girl can waste so much damn time doing that. No offense, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, that's my Divided attention when you try doing too much at one time and nothing is really done. It's literally called my life. You get yourself something. Oh, you got your bottom dollar girl. See ya. I don't think tomorrow's test is that bad, honestly. I'm going to get my board out of my mind. Yeah.